welcome to public conscience on radio the anti-corruption program produced by the progressive impact organization for community development primong with support from the Makato foundation i'm okiri agbonsuremi my co-anchor adaobi obiabumo is right in here with me thanks for joining us on the program on public conscience on radio we seek to evolve a corruption free society through the amplification of corruption reports reported by our media partner, drawing citizens and government's attention for democratic actions against it. We continue with our conversation from where we left off on the issue of electricity distribution uh, in Nigeria last week. Corruption dies hard. But with the cooperation of the stakeholders, including the distributors, the regulators, and indeed the consumers, our campaigns to stop uh, the corruption or extortion, if you want to call it so, inherent in the estimated billions by the disco appears to be paying off, especially now that it is becoming illegal for the discos to bill electricity consumers under estimated billions above a particular threshold amount, that is a particular amount under the capping regime that will come into force shortly. We hear it could come into force in April. And if you recall, in our previous episode, we brought in an expert to break down the complex payment and allocation formula on the new capping policy. But today, we will be engaging the key stakeholders from the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission and Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, one of the distribution companies, to look at how to avoid corruption in capping through proper enforcement. And uh, remember that you can follow us on our social media platforms at official Primog. Primog is P R I M O R G. P R I M O R G. At official Primog. We are streaming live on Facebook. That is official Primog on our Facebook page. And you can also watch our videos on our YouTube channel, uh, Primog TV. Our WhatsApp line, uh, which, where you can immediately begin to drop a message, questions right now is 090 2265. 6167. You can begin to drop a message for us now if the, all the issues you have is related to your understanding of capping and how we are getting ready uh, to wait for the implementation. Prior to this discussion, we focused on the untraceable UBEC school projects recorded as completed in parts of the FCT. The school visited by Daily Trust were found not to have those projects for which over 300 million naira have been paid to contractors. We extended our invitation to boot Ubeck and Suburb to come and offer explanations to the public on the findings by the Daily Trust newspaper to date aside Ubeck that has replied to our letter but failed to appear on the program. The FCT office of uh, the implement, implementing organization to cut, talking about Suburb is yet to respond and clear its name from this corruption allegation that is denying our children from having conducive learning environments in the schools. We have accordingly forwarded a petition to the ICPC to investigate the allegations. We shall be updating you on this UBEG and SUBEB scam. And back to our discussion. After so much complaints and campaigns, including the threat by the National Assembly to criminalize estimated billings, NERC has now introduced the capping of electricity bills for those under the estimated billings. At Primong, we still maintain that estimated bills spins corruption, which is why we employ uh, the DISCO to provide meters for all consumers. Please be ready out there. Of course, we are all consumers of electricity, so be ready to interact with us and prepare your questions. We will throw the phone lines open in a short while. But let's start with the regulators before coming to the discos. I am glad to have uh, the manager consumer affairs, Olisa Chukuma, of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission right here with us in the studios this morning. We want to thank you for joining me at uh, the program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good morning, listeners at home. Now, let's also quickly let you know that uh, we also have the general manager, uh, corporate communications, 
ADC, Mr. Oyobode Fadikbe in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, you very are, much. You are, you are our customer. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, listeners. It's my pleasure to be on the program. Thank you very much. Of course, much. if you have all the questions, both to NEC and to ADC, or indeed any general question, wherever you are listening to us, remember that ADC is in charge of Abuja, Nasarawa, Niger, uh, Kogi. Is that, is that the end? Is yeah. that the, and, and so Niger, and, Nasarawa, Kogi, and Federal Capital Territory. Federal Capital Territory. Yeah. So we also are you not in Kogi? We are. We, we are, are in Kogi. Yeah. Now all the other discos we have about eleven of them uh, all over. Wherever you are picking this signal from, under the Enugu uh, distribution, you are under the Bini distribution, you are under the two distribution companies in Lagos State, the Ikeja Disco, and the others. The template is the same. You can forward your, your questions to us through our phone number and we will respond as soon as possible. We'll get back to you. But AEDC may be speaking for where it has all its uh, uh, mandate here. But the general principle is almost all the same. But the, the challenges may actually be different one way or the other. So if you have a different challenge that is different from the one we want to address, please let us know about it. But let's begin from NEC. Uh, last week we had a, a one person representing the distribu distribution uh, network. In fact, that network, distribution network, is set up by NEC itself, uh, and uh, they try to explain the meaning of capping. Just for us to go back a little, can you just quickly tell us what capping is all about? Okay, in going back, yes. I would like to go a bit further you okay. know, to give listeners at home um, a bit of an idea, the genesis behind capping and what we hope to achieve with it. In 2018, the Commission released the regulation on MAP, Meter Asset Provider. Now, that scheme was to attract private sector investors into the metering space to come and take up this burning of metering away from the discos. In Nigeria today, we have 10 million registered electricity users. Out of this number, roughly about 60% of them don't have meters. So we're talking about 6, 6 million customers don't have meters in Nigeria as of today. That's a very big challenge. Gap. That's a very big gap. Meaning that this number has no idea, you know, in in actuality how much they consume every month and they rely on estimates. Now, while there has been a previous order on estimated billing, how it's supposed to be calculated, it was not really adhered to due to structural and infrastructural deficiencies on the part of the discourse, leading to so many complaints. In 2019, we had an excess of 500,000 complaints on different issues. 65% of those were metering and billing, meaning that it was really manifesting in the numbers that were seen. So this problem was actually, all of this led to the setting up of the MAP regulation. The MAP regulation, like I mentioned earlier, was to attract private sector investors into yes. the system and as such, get them to go ahead and meter. But the responsibility to attract these investors lay with the discos. They were responsible for the procurement of these investors who were to come in, take a look at their networks, they understand, understand you know, the complexity of metering and then provide financing for metering. Now, the capping was actually embedded in that regulation. Section 31 of the MAP regulation stated that 120 days after the regulation was signed, which was in April 2018, there will be capping of estimated billing. What the regulation did not say was the methodology for capping or how you know, the caps were going to be done. So, in effect, capping had actually been approved since 2018. It, just, it was just waiting for implementation. It was just waiting for implementation, exactly. So, have we, we have designed now how it is going to be exactly. done. Exactly. Can you just tell, can you just summarize for us how is capping going to be done uh, in general terms? Because I know it varies from one community, one one place to the other, the, the amount payable and the other, but in general terms. In designing the capping, three approaches were considered. I'll go straight to the one that was adopted. What we did was we looked at every every disco has the operations divided into business units. Some call it regional units, but whatever the case may be, they divide it into subunits where they group their customers under. So what we did was we got data from the discos themselves and looked at your neighbor who has a meter, what is his consumption mm -hmm. over a period of time for the affected classes. In this case, that was the R2 and C1 categories of customers. So we took their data, ran a whole baton of integrity tests on it, and then we took averages of what 
your next door neighbor, you know. Did, who did, you, did, you, did, did you do this around the whole of the country? Yes, for the 11 discos. Wow. All 11 discos. It was a very complex model that took a very lot of time, but at the end of the day, I think we're happy with the results we got, and that's what's reflected in the capping order. When the ordinary person asks you on the road, what is capping? It means that going forward, um, it's expected that your estimated bill is no longer going to be arbitrarily fixed. Now, there's a limit that the commission has put, meaning that if you have been estimated above the cap, depending on where your business unit is, the distribution company is obligated to reduce your consumption in line with the caps as advised by the commission on the 20th of February, 2020. Okay. When you said reduce your consumption, what does that mean? Okay, that was a misterm. It's not really for you to reduce, reduce your consumption. <laughs> it means that you are no longer going to be billed do you understand? In excess of what the, what cap, because, what the, yes, cap, what the cap prescribes. Has the cap is more like a ceiling. If, you are, if you've been billed above a particular kilowatt hours every month, the distribution company is obligated to reduce your, your, your kilowatt hour bill in line with the advice caps by the commission. Now, there are, I, I can see so many challenges here. And I believe you also understand there will be challenges. I don't know how many people work in NEC. The total number of people who work in NEC, everybody, I don't think you're up to uh, 5,000. Every, all the staff, whether you are located in every local government, I'm just as a generating it because I know you are not more than 300. Everybody working in NEC. Now, you have consumers who are underestimated billy in their millions. Six how million are, from what you said. How are, how are you going to enforce this? How are you going to attend to people? How are you going to listen to everybody who will complain? I believe the regulator is a regulator for a reason. You know, when they give an order, it's expected that the distribution companies comply. It's an order of the commission. You cannot cherry pick what you comply with or what you don't. But I agree with you. There is a monitoring challenge that needs to be implemented. And I assure you, irrespective of the number of staff at the commission, we are well equipped, well trained to carry out the monitoring and implementation of Because we are aware that uh, uh, without trying to draw back on the negatives about NEC. You are doing a wonderful job. Thank you. But the fact is that you have also failed woefully in implementing even even orders from your forum the, that you have established and people come and say, this is my problem. We have one in Peggy community, for instance. The Peggy community are writing you now. They just gave us a letter the last time. They are doing reminders. Something that happened over three, four years ago. And you are not able to enforce the order from your own forum that AEDC should provide uh, uh, concrete poles, they should provide metering in phases to that community that have so suffered, they have made contributions in terms of uh, infrastructure to everything. Well, I'm not dragging you into specifics now, into Peggy community, but I'm looking at how are you going to implement the when order. yes, if the discos as it were, because your assumption is that since you are coming up with this policy, the discos will cooperate and but assuming and we know that will happen, they do not comply. The arbitrary bills is still going on. What do you do? How are you going to um, enforce it? Enforcement is always a challenge, but I don't see it as being particularly difficult in this particular case. When I understand why um orders relating to you know consumers would tend to generate more attention, but other things too are orders. The very tariff that the discos are allowed to charge customers is an order. Mm -hmm. You know, and they are, they are compelled to comply with those orders. So it's not an issue of them. And the commission has a very well spelled out sanction grid. Where you violate an order, the consequences for violating those orders are very clear. You pay the penalty. Now, these penalties may not be advertised. They may not get as much sensationalism as it should. But the fact is that they do pay the penalty where they breach orders. And that's what laws are Before for. we come to the AEDC representative, here, what do you tell the consumers at home with regard to enforcement and implementation of this capping? Because so many people don't even, that will be coming to education and even telling people about it. But what do you tell them? As a matter of fact, um, yesterday, if people had followed social media, there has already been testimonies about AEDC complying with the order. So, is a done deal. You know, as far as customers are concerned, they should expect respite from, especially those who have been billed arbitrarily in what they feel, there's already compliance to the other. So there's no need for them to, to worry too much. But rest assured, where there's no compliance with the other, the commission is well positioned to take necessary action. 
Okay. And Mr. Fadipe, this yeah. question is for you now. How will oh. this capping idea help remove corruption? in your dealings with consumers. Of course, we have been talking about... Uh, estimated billings, estimated which billings. know that it's corruption. Because you presume that estimated <laughs> billing is always uh, leading with corruption. You know, if you give me when a bill, you if you give me a bill that I didn't consume, it's extortion, it's corruption. No, let's look at it from this perspective. Uh, first of all, let me also be... Uh, let me also commend Nick. Uh, I'm not sure they went out with the purpose of having a perfect situation in this capping of estimated billing. But that they have even come this far is worthy of commendation. But one challenge that would have become very obvious is that, take for instance the customer class that has been <laughs> grouped for this estimated billing. Take um, uh, the residential customer for instance a single phase meter and okay. take ado for instance somebody in ado who is on a single phase he has been allocated 107 units per month and then and and maybe that single phase customer is just a room and parlor mm -hmm. and then uh, there is also uh, a customer who has about three bedroom flats with about two air conditioners in the same ado in, in the, the same ado and then the two of them are paying the same thing so you see that that challenge is also there but I, I just brought that one up but that is not that's why i started by saying they didn't go out with the intention of having a perfect situation that's why i'm just trying to address the issue of how will they attend to about six million customers yeah. i think the the major issue is that they have an intention to make sure that both the discos and both the i mean both the customers, customers are almost on a fair playing field so that at the end of the day the intention of okay. capping, which is to drive metering, will be speedily achieved. Now, coming to the issue of corruption and estimated billing, I usually come, I mean, I'm always very reluctant when we come from the perspective of the discos being seen as always wanting to sh shortchange the customers. No. But, but that's the perception, actually. It, yes, that, I, I, that's, I, I agree with you. <laughs> yes. A major challenge in the power sector today, a major challenge in the power sector today is the issue of perception management and expectation management. Out there, a lot of customers think that the discos are not for them. But they must understand very clearly that that is why the regulator is there and there are parameters for doing all these things. When we build customers on estimated billing, don't forget that every of our transformer has what we, has a transformer meter. Mm -hmm. And it is from that, and that metering is for accounting purpose. As a matter of fact, NEC insisted that that meter in the transformer is for accounting purpose. And for the purpose of a breakdown, for the purpose of a breakdown, that meter uh, determines they can tell ADC how much electricity is given to a particular uh, area. Yeah, exactly, because the transformer serves a an particular area. area yeah. But you see, we will always admit that there are about three classes of customers that pay for electricity, but four of them use it. One, or maybe uh, two classes of customers that uh, pay for electricity, but three of them use it. One, those who are metered. Mm -hmm. Two, those who are on estimated billing. Three, those who are stealing electricity. Now, so let, let me just ask you this question before you go ahead. Yeah. If five of us are in a community yes. served by a particular transformer, yes. and two of us yes. are metered, yes. Uh, one, no, one, is, one of us is meter. One, one is meter. One is meter. One is on estimated one is an estimated And the total total is stealing, is stealing it. Stealing Who it. pays the cost? The one on estimated, estimated. billing. The estimated billing will have to pay it. He's the one paying it. That's the unfortunate. And that's why it looks like you bring him the bill that you call corrupt bill. So you mm -hmm. encourage those on estimated billing who know people that still... No, we don't encourage them. They should report. Exactly. Why don't you provide everybody meters? Fine. Because now, that's the easiest way out of it. Exactly. Give, give the three of us meters. Now, now, my brother from NEC tried to give a background to the issue of metering. Let's go back a little bit, and I'm sure... And how do they steal it? They steal it by hanging. In fact, there are even those who have meters who also steal by energy by passing. This is the coronavirus of the... <laughs> <laughs> no, frankly, and I'm sure, and I'm sure Lisa will agree, theft of energy is the coronavirus of the power sector. 
is a major challenge. Nigeria, we profound no, how, how, how do you expect me month into month, yes. month into month, yes. into years, yes. I'm paying for electricity that I'm not consuming? Are you the distributors who, are, who is providing the facilities? You are the one providing super superintending over the transformer and everything. Mm -hmm. You just leave me hanging there. You are comfortable just collecting the money from no, me. No, we are not comfortable. You see, uh, I don't want it to seem as if I've come here this morning to throw punches at me. <laughs> no. I'm the regulator. I still must be very careful how I <laughs> but, but be that as it may, it, at the root of power sector issue is the issue of liquidity. That is that is that that has been a major. In fact, one of the reasons why government withdrew from hundred percent ownership of the power sector is also the issue of liquidity. Let's attract. And the discourse were aware that this was this was the business they were coming to come and do. They came into the business without money in their pockets. With profound respect, that's not the case. There are also fiscal policies that affect this thing. You see, when you go to the bank, when you bring your capital into a business, there are some things that are also supposed to make it a lot easier for you to do that business. One, if you are, if there are two sources of funding for a business, your private equity and other equity from yeah. other sources. And other sources could include financial institutions. Now, when you have exhausted your own credit and you take credit from other sources, one of the things that affect I mean, power sector funding is long-term or short-term funding. If it is short-term, it's expensive and it's a, it's, a, it's a lot riskier. But if it is long-term, then you can pay over a period of time because gestation period is also there. Look at this. Look, let's look at Mark. Did you not do your feasibility before you hey, came into hey, this hey. business? See, uh, Primog, let's, let's, you see, <laughs> These are, I agree with you that yes. these are issues, but yes. again, let's not continue to hammer on this oh, feasibility study, you know what you are coming into. The reality on ground today is that even all of those visibility studies have been made nonsense of. Okay, Let, let's, let's come back to the issue. Now, you are planning, or in fact, I was at your very elaborate meeting Thank you where we much. talk about the need for uh, to up the game in yes. terms of uh, tariff and all that. Is. Yes. It does appear that what neck <laughs> what neck was doing through the front door <laughs> to to make sure that nobody is uh, bid what he is not consumed through capping. Mm. You through the back door, you have you have you are taking the money away by the increment of uh, the tariff. You are proposed an increment in the tariff. Uh, are we uh, not taking away what we are going to get from capping? No, you see, before now, I mean, put in another form, neck has a responsibility going by the electric, uh, Electricity's uh, Power Sector Act to review, to do minor review every six months. This from 2016 up to date had not been done. Now, the essence of doing that is also to take a view at the performance of the tariff vis-a-vis -vis the recovery of cost and then compensation. Is it allowing that? Now, if all of those ones have not been done and so many other things have happened within the economy and NEC is coming up now to say, look, we need to take a look at it. I think we must just be honest enough to give credit to them for being that bold to take the, I mean, the bull by the horn. So what that tariff is supposed to do is to look at the entire macro and micro economic circumstances. Of are, are they happening by coincidence that it is the way capping is coming that the increment is coming? It's just coincident? No. Or it, you are just running away from... No, he said it from the beginning that <laughs> this is something that has been approved since 2018 along with MAP. So it's not... It's just that there are timelines. MAP had started since last year and NEC had said, okay, look, you must let us, I mean, we must put a ceiling to the issue of how much you can be a customer. And that's exactly what is happening now. Okay, I would like to know what the fact was hindering the distribution companies from providing meters to consumers. Maybe before you, you, you add this one to it, uh, how will the meters be affected, now distribution be affected under capping? Maps appear to have failed. I mean, you are not able to meet all the demands under the map policy. I, I, I won't agree that MAP has failed. Uh, rather, there may be, a, there may be a, a slowdown, again, as a result of policy, but MAP has not failed. For instance... Are you, are you still giving permitters now? Yes, we are. 
We are. How much of the percentage of those who are asking for, sincerely, are you able to meet up with? It, it is driven by customers. It's not driven by us. Yes. As a matter of fact, we have even done what no other disco has done, or we have set the pace in the country. We now take the uh, meters to the customers themselves. Unfortunately, and I feel very sad about this, we are supposed to meet about 900,000 customers, but we have not metered up to 90,000 customers purely on the basis of customer's response ratio, not okay. AEDC. Okay. Not AEDC. So those who, have, those, those who have applied, yes. who haven't gotten it, yes. under the number of days and time that mm. is expected, mm. what do you tell them? No, unless there is a problem with your meter, and then maybe as a result of, unfortunately, maybe as a result of this coron coronavirus outbreak. Because <laughs> this, coron this corona will kill us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, killing, it's killing the entire globe. It's killing the entire human race. God, God help us. Because and come, I believe they are, China, they are coming from China. Majority of these items come from that economy. Wow. Unfortunately. Majority of these items. So with the outbreak, is so, there a halt on the importation It's only meters? coming in more slowly. Otherwise, not that there is a halt. We still we are still metering customers. Customers are still applying, and we are still metering them. I, I think we must also say that um, uh, at the level of Primong, uh, customers who are listening to us will know that those who sent us messages, uh, uh, ADC had to set up a, a desk for us yes. so that we can have a clearing house, and uh, we will be running on that. But there are so many people who are saying, "You want to quickly respond yes, to something?" Yes, I want to respond yeah. to something. Um, I may not entirely agree with Body on some things that he raised here. You know, and it's something we've been trying to, that's a message the commission has been trying to put out in different fora. When you say customers who apply, that's not the idea of maps. maps is hinged on. In 2016, um, March to be exact, the commission approved the guideline on customer enumeration. The purpose of this, amongst other things, was to find out exactly for each disco how many customers you have and what is their status. I can confidently say Abuja is one of the discos that have completed their customer enumeration. So hinging on that... What about the other discos? We'll address them as... Well, <laughs> as they, come they have not done as much as Abuja... And Abuja has Africa. done very well, okay. as a matter of fact, on customer enumeration. However, the map is supply-driven, meaning that hinging on customer enumeration, they shouldn't wait for a customer they to take the meters apply. to the customer. They should take the meters to the customer. In fact, it's when they tell well, as long you, as there's a supply in your house, in they, your should house take, yeah. they should take the meter there. I agree with him on some points that he raised earlier on, on the fact that estimated customers were bearing the bonds of a lot of energy loss. And the truth is that this is escalating. Year on year, if you look at the customer numbers, they've been growing. As at 2016, on record, there were about 6 million customers. Today, we have 10 million. Okay. And the pace of metering, if you don't supply meters, they understand. If you don't push it aggressively into the market and wait for people who have money to come and buy meters, it's not going to work. Now, let's, uh, let's open the phones, give uh, the opportunity to uh, those who are listening to call in. And uh, please, if you are out there and you want to send a message, you want to find some uh, answers to some of the issues that uh, bother you, please, we have told you the numbers, 09022. Six uh, five six one six seven. Uh, you send us a message, but the phones are already uh, you know buzzing. Hello. Yes, my name is Mike Wenwin Your name is Mike Wenwin Blues. Okay, Mike Wenwin Blues. blues. Go ahead, please. Yes. I want to thank you for this opportunity. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, I want to ask you to for this particular. This back and forth about this meeting that we're talking about, I, I'm very thankful to that the man from uh, uh, Nike studio. Now, in my personal engagement with you, he told me that sometime that, uh, that the ABC is losing revenue by expected delay. And I asked him a question that he never answered to this. Which reliable and capable business organization will identify an avenue to which they're losing revenue? And are still waiting for him hands to for people who 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 are losing their revenue to to be responsible to to, to pay for for for, for to forestall the losing revenue. I mean, what he says, the federal building is taking to the losing revenue. Why is it consumer to to pay for it? A huge organisation, a responsible organisation, will wait and be watching. He knows that there's a problem and will not want to solve it. He uh, knows that they are losing revenue and people are stealing, and then they just are looking at it. He will answer you uh, as time goes on. Let's take more calls before he comes to it. Hello. 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 Uh, this is Mr. Kingsley. Uh, Kingsley, thank you. Just go ahead, please. 
Yeah, sir, I'm calling from Maraba. Number one, we will go Christian to be precise. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are about uh, July last year, uh, they changed my bill to commercial in the place where I'm living. Why? They started building up to 18,000. I think 15,000 something. I complained at the Maraba station there. Nothing was done. And that is why I've been studying. We wrote a complaint. They refused to accept it at that Malabar station there. So I'm at a loss. Eh? The third day before yesterday, all the people around there, they bid them to 2,000. Our own was almost 5,000. My own was almost 5,000 naira. And you see commercial. Let, 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 let's, let's not... Let's, my let's not... To commercial, sir. Let, let, let's not... Uh, we will answer you the question. I will also answer you. We will also tell you what to do. Most of the times, the customers don't take the appropriate steps and then they don't write. When they go to complain uh, verbally, it doesn't work. But you say you have written and they didn't accept it. Did you go to their um, next office to uh, submit that letter? Do you have copies of those complaints you have written over time? They will attend to you. If we, if at level of primal, we can get those things, we will follow it up with you. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes, my name is Majesty, and I'm calling from Guagualada. Go ahead, Majesty. Yes. Sorry, um, I just wanted to make this clear because the meters actually, if you are not using your meter, maybe for more than a month or two months, they will know in the office. So with reference to meters where because we have a meter and that meter was bought and we bought that meter for over seventy thousand naira. Now, this is Kutunku in Gogolada. We now had to clear they told us there were some bills that they had to clear on top. So what I'm now trying to point out is that this meter who supplied you this meter? This was you say you bought it with over 70,000. Who supplied yes. you this meter? Who gave yeah, you this meter? This is stuff that do come, yes, yeah. yeah maybe yeah, you are yeah, dealing yeah. with NEPA one, NEPA two, NEPA three. Because if you if you applied formally and they give you a meter, the, the meter should read zero zero without anything on it. And this if, was a, that's why I'm saying this now. This was exactly what happened. They do come to court lights, bring the estimated billings. We got tired of it. We now ask them we need a meter. They now, they now brought one through the back door for you. So that one now, we are dealing officially <laughs> with the real people. So okay. I don't know, they, we don't know that, and there's no no other person we would have gone to meet now aside them. Because these are people that come to court our lights and what have you. Okay, we understand. Let's go to the next call. I understand the challenge you are facing, and I think Mr. Fadik will also understand what the challenge you are facing. There are so many people who carry one meter from the other. Those meters may be having Hello? bills on them. Hello? My name is Citizen Agerbibe Isaac Go ahead, sir. From Peggy. Calling from Peggy, I want to appreciate uh, the man from NEC who has hit the nail on the head. If AEDC is responsible in doing their business, you should not wait for these customers to come before you meet them. You are complaining about power set and power loss. If truly these transformers were, were metered, why are we having outrageous billings on monthly basis complaints from customers? I moved into my house, I applied for meter, and it was given to me free, for free, and they were deducting on monthly basis as I, as I recharged. Why can't, can't that be applied? Mark has failed. AEDC should comply with the ruling of NEC. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Tao uh, Adedi uh, from uh, Peggy Community. Hello. Uh, they will respond to you, uh, Tao. Yeah, hello. Hello. My name is Ken. I'm calling from Zone 5. Okay, go ahead, please. <clears throat> I have a suggestion for AEDC because I have a neighbor who is also a manager of a unit. So he has been able to um, get some success in his unit. So, I, you, you, know, you know, prepared customers can be checking uh postpaid customers that is the uh, people estimated customers and vice versa you know that uh, this aedc staff that come to give us bills they know those who steal the power but they don't want to do anything because we they prepare me i'm unprepared those that see power and the uh, because of that they are rationing me i should be able to 
report them to this table, this time they know them. And if those that are also being, um, that are also giving estimated billing, if they see me, they should be able, they should also be interested in me. Because if I use meter and I do short cut uh, by passing, it, is, it will come back on them. But they wouldn't so know, they wouldn't know if you are in your, if, yeah, you are, if, if you are in your house. For these customers. If you are so in your. Mr. Vadi, you should, you should please calm down. Most of, 80% of this problem is on your staff that come, they, because they know this staff. They know this staff. Okay. They, they, they know these people that do this thing, but they don't want to do anything about it. All right, it. let's, just, let's just take the last call. They don't want to call. do anything about it. Thank you. Let's take the last call now before we uh, ask them to respond. Hello. 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 Go ahead. Thank you. Um, this is Paul Rotimi Gibi Kamichi from the Kogoma. The, the next man, I would like to ask, do they have field workers at all? Because most of the discos, what they are doing is not fair. They are not giving the power as it, as it should be. I wonder whether they are distributing what is given to them by Jenkos. Then why is it that, there, why is it that there's no power improvement in some areas? Please, there is no light in Kubwa at all. At all, the disco there, they are not doing anything. There's steady light in Lokogoma. There's steady light in Napo. There's steady light in Metama, Sokoro, and the rest. And there's no light in Kubwa. Okay. So the disco in Kubwa is not doing anything. Thank you. They should Thank check you. their activities. Thank you. Uh, some person who call from Kubana, I'll tell you that they have light. But uh, it depends on... <laughs> no, you want... With just one more. Hello. <coughs> Thank you very much. You took my call. Yeah. The last speaker just hinted or two things I want to. Okay. Jenko told us that they have over 13,000 megawatts, but the grid cannot take these megawatts. So this call has issue of this wire distribution and, and transmission. And this, like I'm in Lube here, the transformers are weak. When the when, when the full megawatt is delivered, the transformers are blowing off. So I think the problem has to do with uh, 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 this, uh, this wiring. They are of old ones. All right. So we have enough megawatts. Thank this you. Because, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, what do you say? Cannot take it. The metal grid cannot <laughs> take take in the. the All right. The, we we just have to we just have to wrap up now and uh, in wrapping up we want. Uh, to quickly give you an uh, opportunity to respond to uh, as uh, much as possible. Uh, but you have just one minute to wrap it up. Oh my God. That's, that's <laughs> <the best. laughs> just try. Right. When people ask about 10 questions. Anyway, but yes, in wrapping up, let me just quickly start with this issue of uh, the information out there that everybody is supposed to pay a flat rate of 1,800 naira. That's not true. That's not what next. Yeah, I, I, I think many people many people yes. actually have that impression because it's, the it's, the calculation that was done, for example, in yeah, a document, it was actually an illustration. Showed, yeah, illustration. Fact, the figure 1,800 does not even exist in the entire document. No, what, there, there's 1,800 and something. 72. <laughs> what is that figure? It's 1,872. 1,872. Yes, yes, 74. That's not correct. You need, I mean, 74 kilowatt hour multiplied by... kilowatt I mean, multiplied yes, by 20. 20. 24, oh, yes. 24 so the figure is not 1,800. Yes. Every I think we, tried, we have tried to correct that. Okay, you need you. to do publicities to correct yeah, exactly. that. Last and week and we and tried I to correct Nick it. Is also doing that. <laughs> now, having said that, but again, it's also important to say that that figure is without VAT. So by the time the actual figure comes, it will be 7.5. 7. 7. Plus 0.7.5. That will give you the actual figure. Okay. Now, let me start with uh, Chibike Amichi. I know he's a, very, he's a regular customer of Nigeria. <laughs> <here>, so. <laughs> Even the Jenkos, the transmission came out yesterday to say that we have problem. Thank you. We have problem with gas, and that is why in the last six weeks or so, you will see that we have really had a lot of challenge with power Perhaps supply. Really. There the has drop. been a lot of drop in power supply as a result of the issue of gas. Again, it goes to the issue of liquidity. Let me just leave it at that because of the issue of gas. <laughs> Mr. Derry Big in Peggy. And uh, the gentleman that asked the, uh, the jam question that said, uh, which organization will see a problem? Yeah, that will not solve it, yes. We have, made a, we have made efforts, not attempt. Nobody rewards attempt. We have made several efforts at solving the issue of metering. Trust me, it's not profitable for us to go on estimated billing. 
Yes, there are complaints that our staff are doing this year, are doing that year. But it also takes two to tango. Even these customers themselves, they also encourage how many customers have stepped forward to say, this is what this person is doing and I am ready to supply you the information to deal with that staff. Yes. I mean, the way that yeah, they plug between. Like, convent <laughs> between. They beg them, please take this small money and do this for me. You tell my child is in the hospital. I'm, I'm not happy about Meanwhile, that. Meanwhile, those unestimated Billy will be the one to deal with the one suffering the thing. Okay. We don't just have enough time to go on all of this, I mean, the explanation uh, journey. But all of us, the service It's, it's corruption either, too, because we are so concerned exactly. with uh, it's also corruption. The gate, man corruption. At the gate that is collecting one another to allow the wrong person into the place is also corrupt. Let him not also blame the person that is giving the money. Okay. Uh, let's hear from uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Alisa. Alisa. Mm. Alisa. Yes. Um, there was no specific question. Oh, yeah, just general generally. So, but just generally, I want to appreciate everybody that called. Um, the level of interest they've all exhibited, and most importantly, the level of knowledge that they've displayed about the sector. One thing for the person that was asking if we have field workers. Yes. Yeah. No matter how many field workers we have, like uh, Mr. Body rightly pointed out, the owners to protect this industry belongs to everybody. As you enjoy the light, so does everybody. So the responsibility to make sure that it comes to your area, and if you see anybody, and you protect the facilities wrong, here. Yes, yeah. protect the facilities. If you see anybody doing something wrong, you have a citizen's responsibility to escalate the issue to the relevant authorities and have that issue addressed. On the issue of capping, is not it's still a form of estimation, and we're not happy about it. But it is what it is for now, and we are sure that the and the whole idea is that everybody should be metered. Yes, it's an interim vehicle to move everybody to the promised land of metering. So we just to encourage everybody that, please, as you receive your bills going forward, be very vigilant. While you may have um, different amounts reflected to account for VAT and the energy thing, one thing that must be constant, you must look out for the kilowatt hour that is allocated to your area. That's allocated exactly. to your area, you know, and where it is, where it differs from the order that has been given by the commission. Complaining right? writing. Please complain your writing. Yes. Yes. All right. I don't. Uh, we have to go now. Just a second, just to mention this point. I know, cost. I know, we have started experiencing something now. People no longer getting interested in metering, and even some of them say they don't. <laughs> yes, that's that's a. They don't have meters anymore. Exactly. However, thank God, neck is here. They have also said any customer that rejects meter yes. should be disconnected. Disconnected. Yes. They have also said so. Order. Customers must also be aware of that fact. That if you are not interested in, in meter, meter, you must be disconnected. Be disconnected okay. And you cannot have any ground for complaint in that regard. All right, thank you so much. Please visit the news page of our website, news.primog.org. That is news.primog.org. For all the details of our reports and interviews, our videos are on Primark TV, our YouTube channel. Please visit our website, www.primark.org, to get all the information about Primark. Remember that you can join our team as volunteers. Please feed the volunteer form on our website, uh, www.primark.org, and uh, Drop a message on our phone 090-22-656167 for us to include you on our WhatsApp platform. We have a WhatsApp platform. It is called Primog Forum. 090-22-656167. And uh, when you are there, we can interact the more. I, I want to sincerely thank everyone that participated in this conversation and ensure you stay vigilant, be a responsible citizen by paying your electricity bills and avoiding all illegal connections. And the many thanks to our two guests here, Oye Bode Fadipe, uh, the general manager, Puja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC, and uh, we have uh, Olisa Chukuma, manager, consumer affairs of the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory uh, Commission. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, being part of the program today. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much. And uh, I love you, we have to go now. Yes. Public Conscience on Radio, we must tell you that the program is supported by the John T. and K. 3. D. Makato Foundation, committed to building a more just, verdant, and peaceful world. Get more information on Makato Foundation through their website, macfound.org. I am Adelbio Biabumo. Join us again next week for another episode of Public Conscience on Radio. And remember to support and join us to promote integrity in our advocacy for good governance in Nigeria. My name is Okiri Agbonsu. Remy, join us next week for another episode.